Hey guys, it's Paradise, and one of the awesome looking upcoming action RPGs, Phantom Blade Zero, just got a ton of new gameplay, details, and a new trailer drop, showing off way more of the combat, which previously looked super cinematic, and now we get to see it in action in actual gameplay. It looks like a mixture of Souls Lights combined with hack and slash action games, combining various elements of things from Wokong or Sekiro with the speed and fluidity of games like Devil May Cry and Ghost of Tsushima. This game has been generating significant excitement within the gaming community due to both its intriguing premise and impressive cinematic visuals and combat. But with so many amazing games in this genre and even more on the horizon with things like Black Myth Wukong, Phantom Blade Zero is going to need to stand out, and to be honest with a few of the different elements we see in the gameplay, it's kind of looking like it does. I mean just look at this crazy cannon secondary ranged weapon. So let's go over the game itself, the details, and a bunch of stuff from the new gameplay that really shows off the game pretty well. There's also a playable hands-on demo at previous events coming around the world, so you can play it if you're planning to attend any of these. It was just at the Summer Games Fest, but will also be at China Joy in July, Gamescom in August, and Tokyo Games Show in September. If you're not sure what this game is, Phantom Blade Zero is an action RPG being developed by a Chinese game studio called S-Game, which previously were focusing on mobile games and their massively popular Rainblood mobile franchise. Now this may sound like a worry, but more recently we've actually had some mobile game studios pull off some banger console games such as Shift Up with Stellar Blade, which in my opinion was fantastic, but also Psy Games with Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, another amazing game in its own right. So I'm actually not too wary of mobile game studios stepping into the console game space so long as they actually show off enough of the game, which it looks like S-Game are doing. The story is about a protagonist who's an assassin and his name is Soul. During a mission, Soul was framed and killed, but a mystic healer manages to bring him back to life but only for 66 days. The game's narrative looks to explore themes of betrayal, survival and redemption, however with only 66 days left to live, I assume there will be a unique sense of urgency in the gameplay as you progress through. It's set to be released on PlayStation 5 as well as PC, and there's no details on an Xbox release yet. There's also no release date currently, but with a playable hands-on demo going around all of the major gaming events this year, I would personally expect and hope for a 2025 release. The story itself is estimated to be around 30 to 40 hours long, with it having a semi-open world. It's set to consist of multiple large maps with diverse activities, and they describe it as a map design reminiscent of Soulsborne games, with multi-layered maps but with a unique twist. In a live demonstration, they said that there's hidden chests everywhere, the maps are multi-layered and multi-pathed. Within the newly revealed trailer, we got to see several elements of the game from parkour like wall running and jumping to the combat and various boss battles. The combat looks super cinematic just as it did previously, but now we get to see it with HUD and of course with the gameplay videos that are now out there, we can actually see this expanded on and showed off even more. The combat and action looks to be a major selling point of the game and it's being praised for its fluidity and dynamic nature, being reminiscent of high octane martial arts films. The thing is, Kenji Tanigaki is a well-known Japanese action choreographer and film director, known most for his martial arts movies, and he is the action director of Phantom Blade Zero, so it's not too surprising that the combat looks pretty cool. As seen from the visuals, the game is using Unreal Engine 5 to create a very awesome but dark atmospheric world. It's being described as a kung fu punk art style, combining traditional Chinese motifs with industrial steampunk elements. It's set in a fantastical version of 14th to 16th century Ming Dynasty China. But with so much gameplay out there, let's go over the combat details and tidbits from various interviews and demonstrations. We got some really cool information as well as gameplay demonstrations from one of the founders of S-Game called Soulframe and the community manager David Zhang. The hands-on demo showcased a comprehensive look into the various gameplay mechanics and overall design philosophy of the game, providing an in-depth experience of both the game's 
combat systems, but also a little bit of the exploration elements. In total, the demo includes four stages, one being a tutorial level showing off the basics, controls, and overall flow to the combat, another stage featuring mob minions to clear out, giving a taste of progressing through an area, then with a mini boss at the end, as well as what they describe as a mid-level boss fight, and another final real deal boss fight. So within the demo, no holds were barred for showing off the gameplay as well as some bosses, which is honestly great to see for a game like this. An interesting element of the gameplay though is that unlike traditional Soulsborne games, Phantom Blade Zero focuses on combo-driven combat. You can string together complex sequences of attacks using a variety of weapons as well as phantom edges which I'll expand soon, which result in dynamic and visually awesome fights where they say you will be able to animation cancel, string together combos of various weapons as well as ultimates to create awesome long combo strings. In the demo they showcased three weapon types but did also confirm that there's over 30 weapon types in total in the final game. We got to see the Dual Blades, a fast lightweight weapon that excels in rapid close quarters combat. They seem to be more so for the fast paced player with quick successive attacks, extended combo chains and acrobatic movements. It looks like they have pretty high damage per second and the extra agility provided by them makes it easier to dodge and parry enemy attacks. Then there's the One-Handed Sword, a versatile weapon that balances speed and power, offering a good mix of offense and defense, making it suitable for various combat situations with a balance of quick slashes and powerful strikes. This is looking to be a reliable choice for beginners, but also a great one for experienced players to master. Then they have the Great Sword, a heavy weapon designed for delivering powerful sweeping attacks, capable of dealing significant damage with each individual hit. Great swords are meant to be effective against multiple groups of enemies due to their wide attacks, but they are slower than other weapons. Most notably, the Great Sword's powerful attacks can break enemy defenses and stagger opponents. In the demonstration, they also mentioned there will be a long straight sword. So the way that the actual gameplay works is that you can have two primary weapons equipped at a single time and you can switch between them easily mid-combat. However, you can also carry two Phantom Edges, which are effectively your secondary gadgets. Phantom Edges provide you with additional attacking options that enhance your combo potential with some very awesome looking steampunk style contraptions. For example, we saw the Tiger Hand Cannon, a powerful gadget that can be used mid-combo to charge up and blast enemies at either close range or from a distance with a massive AoE kind of like a grenade launcher. There was another gadget that functioned like a literal flamethrower, unleashing a stream of fire that continuously damages enemies over a wide area, and it sort of semi-stun locks the bosses in place. We also got to see the bow, a less crazy option but still effective, used for long-ranged attacks where you can snipe enemies from a distance and charge up your shots for more damage. But when you're actually fighting some enemies in the combat, there's two important elements to survival. There's a dodge and a block, which will use your stamina or sha chi as it's called in-game, which is the orange colored bar below your health. Blocking too much will deplete this meter, leading into a guard break that will leave you vulnerable, while perfectly timing your dodges can result in advantageous counterattacks similar to a parry. The devs have expressed their aim to recapture the spirit of that PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 era by focusing on innovative gameplay mechanics with fast-paced combos and action-driven combat, but also a compelling narrative with a deep and engaging storyline. For me, it's going to be all about the gameplay and combat to keep me hooked, but if there is a banger of a story too, this could be a very impressive title and new entry into the console market for S game. From the bosses in the demo, we saw that each one had unique attack patterns and abilities, highlighting the importance of understanding the enemy's AI behavior and then adapting your playstyle or build accordingly, which for these type of games is a must and makes overcoming the challenge all the more enjoyable. From the new trailer, gameplay and playable demo, it does seem to highlight the strengths of the game very well, but it's important to remain cautiously optimistic as this is still in development. The final polish and performance of the game will be a big factor to its success success, given its impressive visuals and the speed of combat, it's going to be very important that it plays very smoothly. With over 30 weapons and a bunch of challenging bosses, the balance and playstyle diversity is also going to be important so that you aren't kind of funneled into a particular overpowered weapon or playstyle. And with the game expected to be 30 to 40 hours long with a semi-open world, we definitely need to see more and get our hands on the full game before making any final opinions. But to be honest, the new trailer did get me pretty hyped regardless. The edit cuts, narration, 
music and sound really did capture the intensity of the gameplay, so I'm going to let it play out here so you don't need to go searching for it. <laughs> Go up there. Turn back before it's too late. 